Banjo-Kazooie, the timeless story of a bear, a bird, a mole, a witch, another bear, whatever Mumbo is. And look, it's, it's tricky to explain if you didn't grow up playing it. But if you are a big old Banjo fan from back in the day, let us entertain you for the next few minutes. Chances are you've already taken a rare look at Dream to see how it all began, and watch the Dreaming of Banjo-Kazooie feature in Rare Replay. How can we possibly have any more left in the tank? Well, luckily for this video we do. So join us as we ambush the team members one more time for some what ifs and did you knows that may have passed by even the biggest and boldest of Banjo fans. A lot of little facts here herded together to form one big one. A mini making of the much loved Banjo Kazooie intro sequence. One thing on Banjo is the, uh, is, is the kind of musical references, like the names of the characters. I think Banjo was, was named independently. It kind of just grew from there, that Banjo, and then we added Kazooie and Tootie was originally called Piccolo. She had like a little uh, Piccolo she played. And that kind of all stemmed back from when we're developing Dream, when we're thinking about the music, we wanted it to be kind of really themed. That was Dave Wise's game then, and it was on the Super NES at the time, and I was doing GoldenEye. So I sat there one night writing music. Two blokes walked in. It was Tim and Greg. Tim and Greg were hugely obsessed with music. That they liked it a lot, an awful lot. Like and they really took an awful lot of, you know, pride in it. Tim was a real stickler about writing a tune that you could sort of listen to for hours and end up not get sick of it. Um, and Greg was the same. We we kind of taken inspiration from films like Star Wars when Darth Vader he has his his own his own piece of music and we wanted to put that into games and we hadn't really seen it up to that point so we kind of took that a bit further and we even had the characters singing at one point uh, Black Eye the main pirate bad guy was going to sing his own intro about kind of how how fearsome a pirate he was and uh, how all his crew loved to sail with him even though they didn't because they all hated him. The technology back then because you had so few resources. You had to try and write a decent tune and a decent set of chords that would hopefully people would like. Well, a lot of the guys that I know from back then, I think write great tunes because they had to, because you, you, couldn't, you couldn't bluff it. But I remember Tim was right, yes, crap, I'd like to come work on our game at Dream. I said, oh, I said, yeah, that'd be fine. I just got to finish Goldeneye. No, no, you're done with Goldeneye now. You go to our game tomorrow. <laughs> right, let's go over there. So I went to that, to Red Block, and it was a dream. So I had to work with Dave at the start of that. So Dave had got some tunes going, and I got some tunes going, and we kind of got to going out. And halfway through that, uh, Chris Tampa had um, his game, I think it was RC Pro-Am Racing, something like that, an old, it was an older game of theirs and that, that kind of thing, and that turned into Diddy Hunt Racing. And then it's, Chris said, well, what Dave on that, so I got to have Dream, which is nearly boundary to myself. We thought it was funny that the characters could sing, and we kind of carried some of that over to Banjo. Initially, they were going to play their instruments and almost sing to introduce themselves, but at, at some point in time, the, the singing bit kind of got lost, and they just ended up playing instruments as this little band. So far, so musical. Feels like we need some input on the visuals to balance it out. Where's Ed? Can so ah, there he is. The original intro for Banjo was all mo capped because we'd done that for um, Dream. So we spent a lot of time um, with one of the designers, George, up in his mo cap suit, recording him playing, pretending to play all the instruments like the banjo and the, and the piccolo and stuff. But in the end, we decided actually hand animating it would have, was going to be a better way of going ahead with it. But we did in fact keep Banjo in one of his animations in the intro does actually have the mo cap hips. I think when Banjo's playing his banjo, um, you can see his little hip shimmy that we obviously thought was nice so we left in. There you go, you may not have gotten to hear Banjo sing, but he's still got some moves he didn't need bottles or jam jars to teach him. <laughs> Sticking with the art department, did you ever wonder if anything from Dream was still fit for use in Banjo Kazooie so many years later? Seems like some little things did go the distance. As a team we were always quite keen not to waste things that we'd done, even if the game kind of changed directions. So I remember one thing I, I can remember doing was that um, the ghosts, the little floaty ghosts that we had in Mad Monster Mansion that fly around and chase you, they were actually taken, they were the head of one of the trolls from the N64 version of Dream. And so I took, took the head off the troll and sort of added arms and a little bit of a tail and stuff and he became, you know, the ghost from that level. And we also had the door, I think the door knocker at the top of Grunty's tower was from the kind of gargoyles that I'd done for the temple test uh, level that we used at the start of Banjo. And I think looking back at those, I think they came from one of the 
trolls that I'd made for the Super NES version of Dream. So I, I, there's this kind of strange lineage going back of uh, reused assets. <laughs> yeah, in, in a similar vein, um, Mumbo, he wasn't a troll, but um, he was, I think he started off life as one of the Jinjos and I took the Jinjo body and stuck a skull on him and some feathers and uh, the legend was born, but he's not actually a Jinjo. <laughs> well, that's another fan theory shot to bits. Sorry everyone. At least you got some legacy troll action, so you can't complain. All right, what's next? Another cluster of factoids here, themed around one of the Banjo series' other defining characteristics, the voices. Some mumbo jumbo to get us started, perhaps. Me and Greg had this funny thing about, you know, Leicester lads are going, come on, have a go, if you think you're hard enough. That was like the, the Yovo chant for the football matches. So we thought it'd be funny to stick it in the game. And I thought, that could be Mumbo's talking voice. So originally the, the chant appeared in the Mayhem Temple music, which was, went to, was supposed to be the first game that ended up in the second game. And so I had the samples, I cut them up and just said, oh, play random with random pitch when Mumbo talks. So like, that's his talking voice, it's just me doing with those syllables cut up at least randomly. There are a lot of weird noises and um, pseudo phrases that some of the characters in Banjo-Kazooie say. They were often based on things that were going on within the team where other people would pick up on them uh, and find some comedy. Mumbo would shout Umanaka. Umanaka, I've, I've been through that an awful lot. I don't think I need to go into that anymore. A member of the team uh, was having uh, worries about a potential medical problem that they might have and when they would turn up late in the morning from a doctor's appointment, uh, they'd walk up the corridor and shout, Uminakas. Uminaka was like, oh my bo oh man, oh my knackers. So I had a slight problem at the time, um, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> That's good. You are always endearingly open about these things, Grant. Now, what other audio insights have you got for us? Clanker's voice is just a banjo samples pitched way down. So it's good, whoa, like that. That's his samples like that. <laughs> There's a gravestone in the, the Mad Boss Mansion, it, it goes, that, that's me going, thank you. And Nintendo was obsessed that I was saying, thank you. Thank you. I have to change it up to it and that, no, it still sounds like thank you. Yourself. Do you really think I'm going to say that? In a kid's game, you know, and they, they wouldn't believe me, I had to record it about 50 times. Not the first time we've been suspected of smuggling in rudeness. It's a complete mystery how we ended up with this reputation. <laughs> Now, let's have a few words from a slightly more youthful 2015 vintage Greg. We've heard whispers of a grunty boss battle aftermath that never quite came about. In the first Banjo, we had this mode at the end where Gruntilda died and then this kind of spell goes up in the air and it comes back down again, it smacks into the ground. But, but originally, um, that spell struck Banjo and turned him into a frog. Um, it was like Gruntilda's final say, and, and then the idea was that the player will control Tootie, Banjo's sister, that you just rescued, and she'd go round all the levels again, collecting these, I can't remember what they were, um, coins of some kind, I think they were, um, to actually reverse the, the frog spell on Banjo, so it was a way of kind of having a, a game mode within a mode at the end. And, um, Bottle's Revenge was, was just another version of that. Short and sweet, and one step closer to justice for Tutti. See, we did care, even if we just stuck her face on a milk carton for Banjo-Tooie. <laughs> We've already touched on in-jokes with the Omanaka incident mentioned earlier, but with Rare's camaraderie and top team banter, there are so many more to choose from. There were a lot of in-jokes uh, on the Banjo team. People having fun at each other's expense. I think the humour just reflected the uh, character and the tone of the people that were making it. It might be that one of our very talented artists on the team inspired the Jinjos. I always thought that was a myth, but obviously it's true. The Jinjo character was um, inspired by Grant that he used to call Ed uh, Ginge. Well, he is quite ginger. <laughs> He'll kill me for saying that. <laughs> Uh, and then we just took that 
name and just call it Jinjo. It's like, it was just a really good fit because I think the first Jinjo we'd drawn was this little orange character. Allegedly, the uh, Jinjos were based on, on me and I made them all. They were in the original design documents for Kazoo, so that was the kind of two and a half D banjo. You know, I've always been very pr proud of the Jinjos and it, it was them who actually defeated Grunty at the end of the game, so I had the last laugh. I think it's a very British trait that we're not afraid to kind of kind of poke fun at ourselves. And even Banjo's Fish called Royston. It was the middle name of one of the artists that worked on the game and we couldn't believe he'd been given this as a middle name, so I thought, oh, we're gonna to have to put that in the game. And had the team moved past this kind of behaviour by the time they were making Banjo Tooie? No. No, they had not. The anglerfish boss in Banjo Tooie was called Lord Wu Fak Fak, which is quite an unusual name, but there is a good reason for that name. So I used to share a room with Paul Makachev, also known as Mackie. He would take to beating himself up about whatever coding problem he was facing that day and he would swear quite a lot. You're going to segue into what Malpass said, aren't you? About me being sweary. I don't swear. When he would finally crack whatever problem he was faced with, he would suddenly just go, woo! And so the name of that anglerfish, Lord Wu Fak Fak, is a direct reference to Mackie. God bless him. <laughs> what a bunch of twinkly-eyed rascals. We're just about done here, so hopefully you enjoyed the pleasure of their company and you're still finding out new things about Banjo-Kazooie almost two decades after it came out. Take a look at our other Banjo and Dream related videos too, and five things about other rare classics. We'll catch you next time for more behind the scenes developer sass. Likes and subscribes are always welcome, and you can step back in time right now with a rare look at Dream, or a little bit more recently, five things about Viva Pinata. Plenty more to be heard from the people who made the games in rare replay for Xbox One.